on to the official theories. This one is from Connie's daughter. Okay. She said she can only speculate about what happened to her mother, but did not believe her disappearance was intentional. I think that she was enjoying the outdoors, which she loves, and something happened. The weather came up. She fell. I don't know. But I think that she got surprised. Given the temperature, given the lack of time, given the lack of signs of her, and the fact that Ace is not with her, all points to. Hmm. So I went through and I was reading some comments on the internet. Yeah. Um, one of the ones I liked the most uh, and they wrote, I'm going to read it verbatim because I, I, I liked it so much I copied it. Okay. Here. It said, maybe Connie didn't feel she needed to go bag or that for some reason she needed to leave camp immediately without basics like fire starter, her phone, a radio, a firearm, or bear spray. Any of the things one should carry even if off for a pleasure hike. Could the reason for her abrupt disappearance be the same thing that caused Terrence to run like a hare down a 15-foot bank right past a road that he had he had to have seen? Is there something so frightening on Fog Mountain that Connie hurriedly left her camp to get away and something so terrible on Oro Grande that Terrence bolted into the woods to escape it? Note that one could leave the Oro Grande area, travel on unimproved roads northwest to the Selway campground, then cross the Selway River and it's nothing but rough country to Fog Mountain. And he wrote, by Idaho slash Wyoming slash Montana standards, these two points are not terribly far apart, close enough to make these two separate but similar and simultaneous incidents feel quite curious to me. And I agree. I copied that because I agree with that 100% just after hiking in Montana and spending time out yeah. there, uh, 30 miles, 40 miles on the ground. I, I was just there uh, in fall, and we did 65 miles in five days on yeah. foot. And that was like one of, the, one of the hikes I was looking forward to. So we traveled, you know, 20 miles past the distance between these two events. Yeah. So that's where, again, 45 miles is far, but relative to hiking standards, they're not that far apart. So is this commenter, you know, implying that he thinks something other than the normal wildlife out there scared Terrence and or got Connie? I think the open-ended question is what raises so much interest for me. Yeah. Because on its face, if you if you ignore the Terrence thing, mm -hmm. I would attribute Connie's disappearance to some sort of terrible accident. Yeah. And for whatever reason, if it's so rugged back there, they just have not been able to find the body. You mm -hmm. know, maybe she went for a, a little bit of a walk and had a heart attack or something. Yeah. Um, And, you know, there's some mystery there, but there's no information other than they had a jarbled radio communication. They couldn't quite make out what she said. They said didn't seem like it was like a distress call or anything. Yeah. And then she was gone and the dog turns up and the dog doesn't bring them back to her body or anything. And that's all there is to it. There's no more to the timeline. There's no more information. But then the second event that was witnessed occurs on the exact same day that Connie could have gone missing. That is just so super bizarre. Well, I'm thinking in my head, let's let's check off the things that it probably isn't just based on evidence. So good idea. Um, I'm going to rule out animal animal attack just because I think there would have been evidence of that. The canine units would have picked up on that smell right away. Mm -hmm. If, if it would have been a black bear attack, which there are black bears out there, right? I believe. Yeah. I think, uh, let me scroll back up to the top. I think they are. Yeah. Um, yes. Yeah, so... And, yeah, no no brown bear. And Timberwolf black, and black bear, and there is moose, but yeah. So, you know, it it's not likely for a black bear to attack a human. Yeah, they're. I mean, they're. I always call them scared little dogs. Like, if you're making it... If you don't threaten them and you're not between their babies and you're making noise, you rarely see them because they'll run away, or if you do, they're they're not coming near you. And, you know, in October, I, I would believe that the bears are focused on one thing and one thing only is getting fat for the winter. And... Yep. um. I just so I really don't I don't see uh see that happening. I don't I don't see wolf attack only because her dog survived. Yeah, and uh, you would think you would think that her dog uh, and you always hear stories the dogs take defensive positions for their their owners, their family. Yep. So you I can't imagine that if a pack of wolves actually did it. Yeah. Either of them surviving. Now, it, it's not out of the question for uh, wolves to attack humans. I know 
here in Wisconsin, Joe, you probably heard this, these stories um, here in Wisconsin in northern Wisconsin, a lot of hunters and you know farmers are getting very concerned about the increasing timber wolf population. It's gotten to the point where a lot of hunters aren't taking their dogs out into the field anymore because they're especially like pointers that kind of go deeper out into the woods and they're afraid to take their dogs out there because the wolves have been attacking attacking people's hunting dogs and there was even one story i heard from my uncle i i have not read this anywhere but there was a, a grouse hunter that actually was chased out onto a roll a road by a pack of uh wolves and he he had to start shooting them to get them to disperse so uh, take it for, you know, it, it might be one of those stories kind of told the telephone game, but they are becoming a problem here in Nor Northern Wisconsin. They've been attacking people's, um, you know, livestock. So I don't think it would be out of the realm of possibility for if she's deep in the backcountry by herself, maybe she's injured and a pack of wolves comes upon her. But I just feel like her dog would have, uh, you know, the pack would have got her dog too. Um, yeah, and again, I well, think and and there'd be signs seen, of yeah, you have seen signs of that. So I, you know, I'm ruling out bear and wolf attack. Um, I'm really, really ruling out any animal attack because I think the canine units would would pick up on that because the animals aren't going to hide the evidence. You say that in a lot of episodes, and it's true. It's very, uh, it's it's bad to say about, but it's just yeah. very messy, if yeah. you will, and. Uh, you know, it's October. I, you know, exposure is a, a big risk out in the mountains in Idaho at this time of year, if you're not mm -hmm. prepared, but I really can't see a, a lady like Connie not being prepared for possibly being stuck out there for a night. I mean, she's been out the, working out there for 25 years. She knows yeah, what and, October and is they like. they had every amenity needed to survive at base camp. Yeah. I mean, this, this isn't like rugged back country when you do these these outfitted trips i mean it's it's pretty cool stuff it's like glamping yeah like you're not you're not there to hike you're there to you're there to do a really cool hunt and like i checked out their website it looks awesome i totally would go out with that group and do it it looks i mean the the terrain looks great their amenities look awesome hint hint hunting company <laughs> what i said hint hint hum hunting company <laughs> oh yeah they're probably not gonna hear this thing no, no i just like legitimately would love to go out there because you're always looking for a decent outfitter and they've been around for a while they have great reviews it looks like a lot of fun and i enjoy that stuff yeah but yeah i mean you have not only that setup to survive but like good setup to survive mm -hmm. so um you know it, it's a very rugged terrain so i i can't rule out her fallings you know either in a crev crevasse or off a cliff or something like that it is possible to you know fall like that and not be seen by search and rescue i don't know how likely it would be for the, the dogs to not pick up on that scent yeah especially with how quickly they got canine units out there i mean it was like she went missing and within a matter of hours they had canine units out searching um, and unfortunately the, the information that's publicly available, we don't have good information on if the canine units did in fact pick up some kind of scent, but they didn't find anything. So we can safely assume that it didn't lead anywhere of, you know, importance. Yeah, this is puzzling. I, <laughs> I mean, a, a case like this, when you kind of rule out all of those other things always leads me back to like a human caused incident an abduction, you know, something like that. But it's such a remote area. Yeah, no one no one else is around there because you have, like, the outfitter company and they travel to the base camp, mm -hmm. in which they then travel again to hunting camp. So what are you, some of your theories? <laughs> my, my biggest, I think, my most reasonable theory on Connie is that she went for a hike by herself because she did, did that a lot. Yeah. And she finally had that one in a million horrible luck perfect storm issue where something happened to her where she got injured and died or like i said maybe had a heart attack and she was in an area where her collapsed body fell into a spot where the searchers were unable to find her i think that's the most reasonable thing that happened getting more technically reasonable less likely yeah kind of that whole scenario where you get into the, like the hermit mountain people that just okay go off grid if she stumbled upon somebody 
in wrong place, wrong time, and they, you know, murdered her and took evidence, the body, everything, and left the dog running wild. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where the dog doesn't know how to get back to her or anything like that. Um, and I, I thought about, I was trying to look to see like, okay, is there any animosity towards this, this hunting company? Is there like, could there be, you know, if I'm going to look at it as like a criminal case, yeah you know, did she have anybody that would want to cause her harm? Things like that. And whether there is or there wasn't, I couldn't find any evidence of anything like that. I feel like that would be a pretty big deal and would be reported if there was some kind of rift between her and the hunting company. I can't imagine it. Well, being... I would say not a rift between her and the hunting company between like, I maybe like a conservation group and the hunting company. You know what oh, I'm saying? Gotcha. Like from, from what I understand, like the hunting company and her, like their, their family, I went on their Facebook page and stuff and they're like, yeah, had hundreds of posts about her telling stories, sharing pictures. So, I mean, if they had issues, I can't imagine she'd be working there for so many years. Mm-hmm. And it was, I mean, if they did, holy cow, did they cover it up? Yeah, that, that's that's I mean, that's just how tight knit these people were. So I doubt that I was saying more like a third party that mm. is just anti hunting or something like I don't know. And or just someone who's crazy that, you know, takes it out on them. That's kind of the still plausible, a lot less likely than my initial thought. I mean, if you're going to be somebody who is one of those, you know, we always joke like I'm just going to go off the grid and live in the mountains. Yeah. I mean, this is the place to do that. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. It's yes. remote. It's you know, it's out in the middle of nowhere. It's huge. The chances of you stumbling across someone else are probably pretty slim. So I mean, maybe she came across some deranged mountain man that you know is living like a hermit for the last thirty years out in the mountains, and who knows? I mean, it, it's a possibility. It's not likely. So um, I have. Two more. Okay. <laughs> the next one that's still plausible, maybe, actually maybe more likely than the hermit murderer, illegal grow operation. Okay. When you have, I mean, you have a lot of forest areas that are not as vast as that, where mm-hmm. they are going back there and, and in some back little corner, they're growing marijuana and it's, you know, cartel level, you know, guarding with machine guns type operation going on. Like they got in the, in the. Uh, Emerald Triangle mm-hmm. in California. So was she on her, one of her hikes? Uh, she seemed like an exploring, you know, spirit. Yeah. Was she going off in an area that she knew nothing about? You know, probably taking caution, doing all the things she needed to do to make sure she didn't get lost. Mm-hmm. But then stumble into into some sort of illegal activity or grow operation, and they're not going to let her get away from that. Now I feel like I'll debunk it immediately because as soon as there's a search team, yeah. Like they would have find even if they ditched the area and burnt the plants, or like you'd find that. I feel like. Oh yeah, one hundred percent. That's not going to be something you're going to be able to hide very easily. Yeah, so that's where it's like I kept boggling around back and forth with all the possibilities, and then it was like I always kind of land back to accident, couldn't find the body, and then it was always scratching the back of my head. I'm like, and then this this random kid that just like kind of lost it and ran off like full speed just in a nowhere. And now it's gone. Yeah. Well, you know, I think on the, the other end of the scale, maybe perhaps there's some, <laughs> some kind of creature living out in the woods that terrifies, you know, like this kid saw it and was just so terrified. He just started running. Yeah. Uh, I, I have no, I have no, <laughs> but like I, what I was picturing in my head was like, okay, I'm going full paranormal. You have either, alien some sort of technology or government conspiracy technology where something was emitted and got into the heads or ears of these two people specifically and Connie did the exact same thing like what Mm. like what if at 5 30 at the exact same time these two just stood upright and went sprinting in a direction like almost like attracted to something like like a like a moth to a light when we did our episode on location or uh, the alaska triangle wasn't there one of the one of the pieces of the episode on something that caused people to kind of lose control of themselves and wander. Yep, wander away from town, like into the yeah tundra, and and just never return. Yeah, so you know, obviously, Joe and I are both these are fantastical, you know, far out there theories at this point. 
That's why they're the fun ones to talk about. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, who knows? May, I mean, it is called Fog Mountain. Maybe it's it causes your mind to go foggy and you wander out into the woods. Yeah, I don't know. Under your control. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that the I wish there was more information on the other disappearance because that is just bizarre. And there is not a lot. I mean, there are some, but yeah. like it's all kind of what it's all different ways of saying what I told you. Yeah. And that's kind of what Sinks about is like, it's like these weird things happen and it just kind of just now, like went into the ether. One thing, maybe with Terrence, and I, I don't think this would be a likelihood with Connie, but maybe Terrence took some type of psychedelic or something that caused him to go like crazy and just start running. Oh, and like no one in the group's going to admit it type of deal? Yeah. I, I mean, I have heard stories of people taking you know, certain types of psychedelics and it just, you know, it affects every person differently. And sure, it causes... like you're on psilocybin in the woods and you start <laughs> seeing what well, you, like, yeah. like you said, maybe he saw something. He, maybe maybe he his brain saw something, something that wasn't yeah, there. Ex- exactly. Yeah. So maybe, I mean, that actually to me seems a lot more likely than anything else. That... Yeah. Because if you're on, uh, yeah, I would say we don't want to slander it, but no. if we're thinking real scientific possibility, something that would make you do something that's just create wildly runoff. Yeah, yeah, and I just think about picking up people that were at risk of ODing when I was in the ambulance, and the stuff they would say and do. Yeah, was like, even though I've seen it a million times, like every new person I pick up, they would do or say something. I'm like, I like can't believe a human being's doing that or saying that. Yeah, and we have no evidence that Terrence was on drugs. I'm just saying. If you look at what could cause that, what would cause somebody to just turn around and just start running as fast as they can and not stopping. And the first thing in my head I was thinking of, was, yeah, some type of, uh, you know, psychedelic brain altering drug. And he saw something that freaked him out and he just started running. Okay. So I didn't think about that at all, but I think that's a very real possibility for sure. Yeah. Now I, I I don't think Connie was on drugs. (laughs) No. I, I think I'm... Or if she was, it was like marijuana, and that wouldn't do that. <laughs> um, no, I think, uh, I think like you said, she suffered some maybe medical emergency or she was injured. I just think the, par- the forest is too remote for... I always like to go to human-caused, but in this case, I just, I'm not seeing it with how remote the forest is. Mm-hmm. 